Shavua Tov! I feel like I should be saying Shabbat Shalom because this is my sermon from this past Shabbat, but I wanted to be able to share it with anyone who wants to listen, so we're going to dig in. This past week, we read Vayikra, the beginning of the book of Leviticus, the rules of sacrifice. And to read about the rules of sacrifice at this time of physical distancing as the pandemic sweeps the world... I can't think of a better topic to begin discussing. And there are three aspects from the Parsha I want to dive into a little bit. The Zevach Shlamim, the Chatat offering, and Reach Nichoach Ladunai. Zevach Shlamim is this unusual sacrifice in which people and the priests, after you brought the animal, you put it on the barbecue, and then you sat down and you ate it together. That's the amazing part. In the ancient world, the priests were totally separate in every other way. This was mind-boggling for a regular person to say, I should sit down and eat a meal with the priest, that we should be together like we're the same, have organic conversation. It is both an essential truth of what it means to be a Jew, that each of us is as close to God as the next person, and the challenge for our moment. Because the, the, the underlying factor of this idea has carried through all of Judaism. Every version of Jewish existence has had a huge focus on sitting and eating together. It's not an accident that every uh, subsect of Jewish culture has their own kinds of food, their own special dishes, that Shabbat dinner became always a big thing, that whenever we do something, sell uh, our big famous line, they tried to kill us, they failed, let's eat. Let's eat. That's the way we do things. And that to get today, we can't just gather together and have meals. We can't do zevach shlamim. We can't find a way to be in the same space, sharing a meal, and let that organic conversation happen. So it's a challenge. Because what's the reason for the food? It's not because we all need to eat, though we do. You could do that by yourself. The reason is the food acts as a catalyst. Because inside of us is something holy, something that matters and is important. And it's our job to get it out into the world, to share it with others, and mealtime is a great place for that. So that's our challenge during this time. What is important right now to you? What is inside that matters and how can you push it out to the world? It could be just writing a journal to share with someone uh, later on. It could be Zoom calling. It could be still doing your date night, but on the couch, or Zooming another couple and doing a double date with a bottle of wine, or two bottles, I suppose, as the case may be. Physical distancing is how we survive, but Zevach Shlamim is how we will live. Find a way to share your holy self with someone else. The second is the chatat offering, which is the other major way that our sacrificial system differed from the others at the time. In most other ancient cultures, human sacrifice was part of the way they worshipped their gods. And one of the key stakes in the ground, red line, line in the sand, whatever you want to use, that the Torah is laying out. In fact, you could argue that the entire Torah is one long argument against human sacrifice. But we lose something when we also choose not to do human sacrifice. Certainly, to be clear, worth the trade-off. But we lose some drama. When we want to talk to God, we want it to feel like the most important thing ever, the biggest deal there is. And human sacrifice accomplished that at a horrible cost. And so the chatat offering takes its place as a not equal but tries to add to the dramatic value, the dramatic impact of the sacrifice. Most of the time, the way sacrifices work is you bring an animal and either the priests eat some, that was how they like made their money basically, was through food, collecting it, or maybe the person ate some of it, or like they ate together like the shlamim. But the chatat offering was when you um, burned the whole thing, everything. Is the whole animal would go up. And I think also it reminds us today of a truth and a challenge. The truth is that sometimes in life we have to give of our whole self. 
Right now, that's literally true for many families who are losing people not just to this disease, but to the unintended consequences. We don't know numbers. How many people have or are going to die by suicide because of this isolation? How many people, because of the economic fallout, are going to, in various ways, lose their lives? How many people who are sick and need to go to the hospital, but there is no bed because corona has taken every single bed there is? We don't know the answer. Some people are giving all of themselves. But even less than that, even metaphorically, the way in which we are throwing our whole selves into this, of changing our world completely, of trying to find some way to face the economic implications of all these terrible things that are happening, it can feel like we are giving our whole self. And that truth is what I imagine those people who spent their almost every moment of every day trying to make sure they had enough food, as they watched a whole animal burn up on the altar at reminding themselves that sometimes you have to give it all. And that's the challenge. Because in that moment, the thing that was most important to those people, they saw it and they still said, and I'll still find a way to live a life of meaning. And that's our challenge now. Despite all of these people and ourselves who are giving everything, can we still find meaning? Can we still find holiness? And we still find God. Third, <coughs> third is the Reach Ladunai. At the end of each sacrifice, it says, And the smoke went up, and we knew it was accepted because it was a pleasing odor to God. That's crazy town, in almost every possible way. We are not supposed to imagine God as anthropomorphized at all, so God smelling is already. A little weird what's going on there. But also, I'm not an expert in physics, but I'm pretty confident if you have a fire, the smoke is going to go up. So every sacrifice is offered that's built into the system. That's not a process of trying to figure out if your offering is accepted. That's just acknowledging that smoke goes up. So what do we learn from this? And again, a, a, a truth and a challenge. The truth is we learn from uh, a story that I heard from Rabbi Lucas, uh, Rabbi Ari Lucas, Rabbi Alan Lucas' son. Uh, Rabbi Ari Lucas was just on Facebook the other day sharing a story that is a children's story called The Boy and the Bot. And the idea is that the boy and a robot are best friends and the robot goes into like maintenance mode and the boy tries to take care of him the only way he knows how. He like tucks him into bed, he takes the thermometer in his mouth and nothing helps, obviously. And then the reverse happens, the boy goes to sleep and the robot is horrified, what does he do? And so he tries to like oil him, he tries to like put new batteries in him and obviously none of that helps. And the answer is, is that essentially, when we try to help most of the time, what we do is we try to do what would be helpful for us. But very often the other person is a robot or a boy <laughs> instead of ourselves. And I imagine the people then having the same experience, being like, that smell, the smell of barbecue is amazing. Even vegans, I got to imagine, acknowledge that the smell is excellent, even if they're making the conscious choice not to eat it. The, the smell, people wanted that. It's the smell of food, of togetherness. And so they have imagined that God wants it too. And that's the truth that's present right now. The truth is, is that we want to help everyone and want to do what we think we need. And there comes the challenge. The rabbis, after the temple falls away, and the prophets separately, but uh, in quoting each other, eventually lay out a number of cases of what to do with the temple destroyed. What does God want from us? And each time they say some version of, they want, God wants acts of loving kindness. It's almost as if we learned the story of the boy in the bot. And we learned that God, while maybe enjoyed the reach, nichoach, what he wanted was for us to be kind to each other. And so there's our challenge. When we try to reach out to help, are we doing the thing that we think someone else should need? 
Or are we listening and trying to do what they really say they do need? This is not Shabbat anymore, so this week, I wish each of us a Zevach Shlamim a chance to take what's holy inside of us, share it with the world. I wish each of us the chance to acknowledge that very often we are giving our whole self, and as difficult as that might be, that we might find a path forward to meaning and holiness. And third, as we try and be there for each other, I wish us the chance to see the differences and see what a person really wants or needs, and not just what we think they do. Shabbat Shalom, or really Shabbat Tov.